Scientists in the United Arab Emirates UAE, have taken matters into their own hands in response to the rising frequency of heat waves and depleting water supplies. Using a fleet of drones, they were able to simulate heavy downpours. In today's video, we'll discuss how Dubai generated fake rain. The United Arab Emirates receives approximately 4 inches of rain per year. The government hopes that zapping clouds to generate rain on a regular basis will help to mitigate some of the country's yearly heat waves. Scientists manufacture the storms using drones that hit clouds with electricity, causing huge raindrops, according to research from the University of Reading in the United Kingdom. In the hot country, where tiny droplets evaporate before reaching the ground, the larger rains are crucial. The United Arab Emirates has been particularly severely struck by this season's scorching heat, with temperatures reaching 51.8 degrees Celsius in June. That's nearly 125 degrees Fahrenheit for the Americans in the room. Worse, Dubai only receives four inches of rain every year, making summers miserable and agriculture practically impossible. The country imports more than 80% of its food. Experts at the country's National Center of Meteorology have devised a revolutionary method to make a world of difference while people strive to stay inside, cool, and hydrated. Employing drones to produce precipitation via laser beams. According to Vanguard, Dubai is currently deploying drones that fly into the clouds and discharge electrical charges to create rain. The charges cause the clouds to condense and rain to fall. The UAE has been working with researchers at the University of Reading to find a method to replenish exhausted aquifers, reduce reliance on expensive desalination plants for water, and lower scorching temperatures. Unmanned drones that discharge electricity into clouds have been deployed into the atmosphere to assist smaller water droplets to condense into larger ones, which then fall as rain. Cloud seeding has been around since 1923, and countries have employed it to reduce air pollution and create snow on mountaintops. Cloud seeding is a science that has existed in various forms for several decades. Rain or snow can be induced by adding certain compounds or chemicals to existing clouds, such as silver iodide. You may recall stories of China's efforts to ensure clear skies ahead of the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, or an accident in which Russia dropped a non-powderized block of cement onto a poor Muscovite home by accident. It is a process in which specific changes in the weather cause rain or snow to fall. Cloud seeding is not a new concept. W.D. Bancroft attempted it for the first time in 1923. The most popular method for observing clouds is to inject chemicals into and around existing clouds. Through chemical reactions or by producing crystalline ice nuclei around which water droplets can form and concentrate. These substances increase the rate of condensation. Airplanes, rockets, and even ground generators can be used to deliver these salts and chemicals. While the effectiveness of cloud seeding is debatable, the benefits are undeniable. Cloud seeding causes the creation of clouds that produce rain or snow when they would not have been heavy or low enough to do so before. What are the negative consequences of this? Several scientists and environmental activists have expressed worry over the use of potentially dangerous chemicals and salts in the manufacturing of clouds. There are still questions about whether manufacturing artificial precipitation in one region will have an impact on other areas. Cloud seeding raises substantial safety issues because the byproducts of these weather-altering operations will physically rain down on people's heads, crops, and drinking water. Some people are concerned that the accumulating particles will linger and become carcinogenic to humans or detrimental to the environment. The UAE have invested more than $15 million on nine rain enhancement projects over the years, the first eight of which use traditional cloud seeding methods. But the country is now taking a different approach in their quest for water security. Rather than dispersing particulates as done in traditional cloud seeding, the Emirati Weather Center is using drones to zap the air into submission. 
These drones are designed to target certain clouds and use electrical discharges via concentrated lasers to forcibly pool water droplets in the air, thus triggering desired rainfall. With the equivalent of an atmospheric cattle prod, Dubai has achieved just that, electrocuting the air into rain. The UAE is also looking at methods of preserving the rain that hits the ground rather than allowing it to evaporate. To this end, the country has about 130 dams and dikes with a storage capacity of 120 million cubic meters, according to the ministry. If successful, this technology presents a way for numerous water-scarce areas to essentially create rain on demand. New cloud seeding technology can potentially reduce water scarcity in numerous areas that do not receive adequate rainfall, preventing drought conditions and saving thousands of lives in the process. The technology can also be used to create rain that would then replenish underground aquifers, lakes, rivers, and other freshwater sources. Besides UAE, countries like India and China are already experimenting with other cloud seeding technologies for arid regions to prevent large-scale droughts. Faced with the increasing urgency of climate change, such technologies will continue to develop to help human civilization adapt to the increased ecological pressures. What remains to be seen is whether the rest of the globe will follow their lead. Eight western states, mainly in the upper Colorado River Basin, already use the classic technique of cloud seeding. Weather Modification Inc., for example, claims to be an expert in using silver iodide to increase rainfall or snowfall. Determining the efficacy of such efforts has been challenging until recently, and even now to some extent. More troubling is a hazard that will persist even if the technique is demonstrated to be completely risk-free. Every country's water security is a top priority. There is no life, no agriculture, and no country without water. Water access has sparked wars in the past and continues to do so today. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, and control of the Nile, a river that has brought both riches and conflict to the region for millennia, are causing a ruckus in the Horn of Africa. Egypt and Sudan have threatened war with Ethiopia over the dam's potential to deprive downstream governments of water, though they have so far voiced hope for preventive diplomacy to avoid a full-fledged warfare. Whether hostilities rise or fall will be primarily determined by foreign pressure. The heat has produced a terrible drought in Iran's southwestern Khuzestan area, with the authorities forcibly repressing desperate demonstrators on the other side of the Persian Gulf from the UAE. It's easy to picture the Iranian dictatorship or other authoritarians employing weather modification as a weapon against internal and external opposition, or blaming a neighbor's seeding activities as the source of domestic weather troubles if cloud seeding becomes more widespread. A hot or thirsty country triggering rainfall to the detriment of their neighbors is arguably taking what's not theirs. The jurisdiction over not yet fallen rain resources will be tricky, with no applicable international law regulating the issue directly. The geopolitical implications would become more troubling as calls for restitution are likely to escalate. Water availability may become a tool of coercion or a trigger of conflict if controlling the weather is a privilege reserved for the powerful and wealthy. For what it's worth, a four-decade-old UN resolution prohibits the hostile use of environmental manipulation techniques and an international outcry is expected if a government attempts to impose an endless dry season on its adversaries. Even still, settling claims and disagreements over stolen rain will be a new and difficult type of conflict for the planet, especially if summers continue to be as hot as this one. What are your thoughts about this? Share it with us in the comments section below. If you enjoy this video, please push the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for you to be updated with our new video.